What's up everyone, how are we doing? Today I wanna to talk about a concept or a topic which I've been thinking about lately as I've been watching a lot of college basketball and it's the movement asymmetry principle. And it's something I've been kind of chewing on and I'm sure I'm not the first to think of it, but I'll break it down anyway based on what I've been observing. And this concept applies to any sport where we're trying to get open. So why do I bring this up? Because in training we focus so much on physical abilities. But physical abilities are not the end all be all. You still actually need to express your skill. And in that, there's a thing called getting open, like in football, if you're a wide receiver or a basketball player, um, getting your shot at certain times. Doesn't matter how fast you are, some players are extremely athletic and struggle to get open, and some people aren't, well, not very athletic and they get open all the time, it seems like. And so I was thinking about this, and then uh, it got me kind of chewing on it in a different way to think about it. As I grew up, I always thought it was pure athleticism, right? But that's obviously not the case. There's obviously something like craftiness. And so let me just dive into this concept really quick and explain it. So I'm sure you've all, if you've played basketball, have dealt with an athlete or an individual that is not very athletic, but seems to always get open. And on the other hand, you've maybe dealt with an athlete who's super athletic, who just can't seem to get open at all. And a lot of what this might come from is what I call the, the movement asymmetry principle. And the idea is pretty simple. For every movement that I want to fake, if I move one inch, I need the defender, my, uh, pers my opposition, the person trying to stop me, to move greater than one inch, right? The effort I exert needs to make them exert more effort. And that creates leverage. So the difference between how far they move versus how far I actually move creates leverage. That difference is then uh, amplified by my athleticism. So if I'm really athletic, I don't need much leverage at all. If I'm not very athletic, I need lots of leverage. And so you find individuals who are very skilled at making people move really far and then themselves not move very far. And in turn, they don't have to be super athletic to get open. On the other hand, you might find an athlete who is extremely athletic, who has some decent skills and can get the other defender to move a little bit, but they don't need as much leverage as the other athlete because they're so much quicker, they can take advantage of smaller amount of leverage. And sometimes you get the athlete who's either super athletic or super not athletic, who just can't create any leverage. They are very predictable. And for every effort they move, the defense actually might move less than that, right? When you get people who are moving, you move two inches for your fake and they only move one inch in response, you're not creating much leverage at all. You're actually really easy to guard. And so in thinking about this, uh, we should then think about what that actually means for sport and performance. Because so often we're like, oh, we want to get powerful. We want to get explosive. But why are we getting powerful? Why are we getting explosive? Well, that's typically to take advantage of the leverage we create. Well, how do we actually create leverage, right? It doesn't matter if someone is extremely athletic. We're actually not building their robustness very much if they aren't increasing the amount of leverage they're uh, allow getting in offense, right? We're trying to get someone to move. Well, you get explosive as you want, you're not getting any better at your skill. And so I'm not saying being explosive isn't helpful. It obviously is helpful, but only one side of that coin is what I'm trying to uh, elucidate, or I'm trying to bring, bring to light is that the idea that you only have eh, one little bit of movement and the, uh, off, the defender has a, a bigger movement, right? So you have some leverage, but then you create that gap in between that leverage and you're athletic, you can take advantage of it. But if you're not very athletic, you need a bigger amount of leverage. So something to think about. Now, when we are putting this all together as a coach, there's a lot of questions, right? How do you create leverage uh, in the first place? Um, but that's not what I'm here to discuss. If I had that answer for you, I would be maybe not sure. I don't know. Maybe I would, but it's not something I have dove into enough, but I think it has a lot to do with your own rhythm and cueing, but also understanding what kind of cues the defense goes on. But it's important to understand when we evaluate players and look at players, what side of the coin they fit on, right? If it's an individual who creates tons of leverage already, and they're great at that, well, getting them really explosive might actually help them a ton. Why? Because they already create lots of leverage. And so if they get more explosive, they can use more of that leverage and they don't need to be so great all the time. So imagine this, I make a move one inch and the athlete moves, the defender moves two inches. Now I have two inches of leverage. 
Now, if that is the most amount my athleticism lets me to use, then every time I make a move, I could get someone to move two inches for every one I move, or th I guess three inches for every one. So it's two, you know, difference of two inches. I need to create two inches of leverage, and that's the maximum amount of leverage I can use. But let's say I maintain those skills, and as I'm crossing you over, you can't see here. I maintain those skills, and I get more athletic. Now I have a poor movement. It's not as good of a crossover, but I still get the defender to move maybe two inches and I only moved one, so I have one inch of leverage, but now I'm more athletic so I can take advantage of that leverage to still get open. So I hope you get that idea, right? We can get the amount of space we can create and then the amount of space we can actually use is based on the, the use of that is based on our athleticism, but the amount of space we actually create is based on the skill. And so, and you can even talk about well, maybe if someone's really athletic and really skilled, then the defender actually will move even more because they anticipate psychologically that this person is going to A, shake me, but also B, if I give any leverage at all, they're going to go by me. And so by default, the defender's probably be like, I just can't give up any leverage. I'm going to have to take a gamble. I know I can't move very far. So if you get someone to move, uh, they're going to be very reactive, right? They're, they're going to gamble further because they know they have to make sure they don't give up any leverage. Just something to think about. I wanted to share those thoughts with you all. So use this platform. If you guys like these videos, let me know. I appreciate you listening. As always, take care and I hope you enjoy it.